want to bore you with details, but you really need to understand the science to understand why methylene blue works. What I think is really exciting, not only do we have a lot of patients on tonight, I have a lot of prescribers that are on tonight that want to learn about methylene blue. So we're going to kind of take a deeper dive to understand. Really, once you kind of look at it, it's not that complicated, but just to kind of understand. So within the mitochondria, if you look at it, it's kind of what I, what I was explained to me. And I want to start out, too, as we go into this data now and tell you, I really want to thank two people tonight for our talk. One is Sarah Hover with PCCA. It's a uh, one of our companies that we have a great relationship that we purchase a lot of our chemicals from and our compound for our compounding. They're all about quality, just like us. A lot of the material tonight is from a talk that she gave several weeks back. I also want to give credit to um, Dr. Bean from uh, uh, the um, Frontline Care Group. Um, he's a physician that did a lot of really great talks on methylene blue and the actual scientific mechanisms of how it works. And much of their information is included tonight. And I want to thank them. And I have a little slide at the end to also give that credit, but I want to bring that out. But if you look at the mitochondria, it's it's a double, it's basically a double membrane organism that basically folds upon itself. And the reason it folds upon itself is, is each of these service surfaces has a function. And the mitochondria is within this mitochondria is where cell production takes place. And the way I can best explain or I heard it explained, it's like a purse within a purse. And the reason for that is in a minute, we'll talk about that. But within this is where basically energy production occurs, ATP is produced. And throughout that, through this metabolism process, the, 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 the side effects or the kind of the discharge that happens are what's called re reactive oxygen species or ROS. And those have a role in terms of needing to be cleaned up over time. So that's our mitochondria to keep it pretty simple. So what I wanna talk about is up here in this drawing is a picture of what I just showed you. It's basically a, a, a cell membrane within a cell membrane and it's got these folds upon itself. And all along the ridges in this, and this is kind of blown up diagram here below of this little square in the diagram, all down here within these, within these cell walls are something that's called an electron transport chain. Big long word. Basically, it's where it's how the mitochondria makes its energy. And then the other thing that's part of this electron transport chain is this called ATP synthase. And all this basically means is to make it really simple is this is how the body makes your ATP. And I'll kind of walk you through this process quickly, not to get into details, but I want you to understand because you have to understand this to understand how methylene blue is going to work. So basically what happens is when we eat food, when we eat basically carbohydrates and fat, our bodies make the fuel that drives this process. And, this pro and that's this process down here. And through this process, if you think of it, it's nothing, things are gonna come in and things are gonna come out. We eat food and the food that we eat gives this electron transport chain the fuel that it needs to basically pump out electrons out of this inner membrane, if you look at the thing here, into this intermembrane space. So what happens is you think about something. Let's let's use basically like a, a diagram in terms of what we do if we're going to try to create what's called a gradient. If we push something really, really far one way, which means if we fill this inner membrane space full of electrons, at some point there's so many electrons here in this space the laws of physics and the laws of nature say, hey, we got to come back the other way. And what happens is all of those electrons that have been pumped out here in this inner membrane space go through this gradient and come back through this ATP synthase. And if you think of it like a big turbine, it's over here spinning. So we pump things out, they come back in. And when they come back in, this ATP synthase begins to churn. And when it churns, every time it churns, it generates ATP. And like we talked about, ATP is the energy currency of the body. Without ATP, I couldn't give this talk. I wouldn't function but a second, I would be dead. Think about this. This goes on millions and millions of times per second in the body. So you have to think about how important this process is. So the basics of this process, once again, is we eat food. The body takes that food and generates a currency that works for this system. 
it, our body then pumps out or pushes out electrons into this inner main membrane space. That gradient, the excess amount of electrons that are produced flows back through this ATP synthase. The turbine wheel spins. And on the backside, our body generates ATP. It's what we use to live. So keep in mind through this process, electrons float from one to two to three to four. But when that electron gets worked and used, once again, remember how we produce byproducts, we actually produce um, what's called these reactive oxygen species. And that's why we also have to have oxygen here. This is where the oxygen we breathe comes in. Our oxygen here can actually scavenge up these byproducts and our body creates water. It make, actually makes water at this point. So the point is, this is this process that goes on and on and on throughout our processes to produce energy. So as we go along, just following the slides here, the cell membranes of the mitochondria are loaded full of enzymes. The big one that we're going to talk about for tonight is this electron transport chain. We got ATP synthase that makes ATP. And these are very sensitive in terms of how they work. Remember, these items here pump electrons into the inner membrane space. And then this gradient or this turbine produces ATP. Now, let's talk about the, the next process in this. With methylene blue, what happens is, and a normal functioning mitochondria, this process goes on, everything's happy. We produce enough byproducts, but not too many byproducts so that the body can clean those up. We make ATP and the cycle re repletes itself. But a couple of different things can happen. When we have a tissue that does not, remember we talked about, you have to have oxygen present down here to scavenge up these free radicals. You also have to eat good food. You also have to have, and the way that the body gets your nutrients to these cells is by something called nitric oxide. We've heard about that a lot. Nitric oxide dilates blood vessels. Well, why does it dilate blood vessels? It dilates blood vessels so that the body can carry blood to these cells so that we can get oxygen and nutrients. Remember the nutrients down here are what drives this electron transport chain. Oxygen's what's needed to complete this process. And in a happy, wonderful, healthy cell, everything works great. But remember the list of things that I showed you that basically can affect our mitochondria? Well, one of those things can be basically an ischemic event. And what that means is that's a tissue that no longer gets enough oxygen to survive. You can think of things like heart attacks and strokes. More importantly, like we talked about, one of the cells or one of the organs in the body are the systems in the body that has thousands of mitochondria per cell is our central nervous system and our brain. And that's one of the things we're gonna talk a lot about tonight, why methylene blue has such a tremendous impact on the brain and our neurocognitive function is because this process has happened in millions of times per second. Well, what happens is if we don't have enough oxygen and we don't have enough nutrients, this process goes awry. And what's really kind of scary about this is when this process goes awry, the body kind of goes in a, in a stress mode. And this stress mode does two things. These byproducts, if this process happens and we don't have enough oxygen, the body actually will begin to leak out these waste products, these reactive oxygen species. And unfortunately in the body, they have a really negative effect. They cause our proteins to get misfolded. They send a signal to our immune system saying, hey, immune system, my mitochondria, this cell isn't functioning very well and you may need to come clean me up. And actually the body may actually then send a signal and go actually go take and eat and destroy that cell. Well, as we talked about, some of these are our brain cells. We don't want to lose those. And that's the important part that can happen if we don't have enough oxygen. If we don't have enough nutrients, this cell don't produce enough ATP. That sends a signal to the body to say, hey, this cell's not doing what it should. Man, this cell is dysfunctional. The body then may say, hey, we need to send the immune system to clean that up. So these are just some things that go on in the system on a regular basis. Now here comes methylene blue. Methylene blue comes in and does a couple really, really unique things. So in a case where we don't have enough uh, nutrients to feed the cell, or in a case where we don't have enough oxygen to basically fix the cell and help it do its own thing, in terms of getting rid of some of the byproducts, methylene blue comes in and does three really unique things. 
So the first thing methylene blue can come in, in the absence of nutrients, that's in the absence of carbohydrates and fat, which are the feeders for this electron transport chain, methylene blue can come in on its own and donate electrons. That means give it the fuel to pump out the, the electrons into that intermembrane space and still create the gradient, even if it doesn't have the nutrients to do so. So in a oxygen and an oxygen derived tissue, no nutrients, methylene blue can actually allow the body to still allow this process to happen, even if it doesn't have the nutrients. That's the first thing methylene blue can do. The next thing that methylene blue can do is when it comes into the cell, it actually has the ability to come in here and scavenge up even more oxygen. And what did I say a while ago? No oxygen, we got problems. But when there's low oxygen, the body's pretty smart. Our cells have the ability to say, uh-oh, there's no oxygen. Methylene blue is taking even more of this oxygen. It sends a signal out to the body and the body then has the ability to say, uh-oh, we need more nitric oxide. And what do we say nitric oxide does? Nitric oxide dilates the blood vessels to allow more oxygen and allow more nutrient to get to that cell. So that's a really unique benefit in terms of what methylene blue can do. It can actually stimulate the body to produce more nitric oxide to feed this cell and keep it healthy. The last thing that methylene blue does, it's really kind of unique. Methylene blue has the ability to take away and, and it also has the ability to accept. Methylene blue can actually scavenge up Remember those byproducts I told you, these reactive oxygen species, which send bad signals to the body? Methylene blue can actually scavenge up these reactive oxygen species and basically carry those away and pull those off. So the body doesn't think the cell is in danger or in stress and want to come take care of it. So those are three really unique mechanisms beyond other things that methylene blue can do that are really important in terms of the mitochondria and its function and how it works. And basically that's what my notes over here talk about in terms of its ability to allow this whole electron transport chain to work. They can actually take and get more oxygen to the tissues. And basically it prevents the body from signaling that, hey, we need to clean up the cell and get rid of it. So I just wanna kind of walk you through that again. I know it's a lot of information, but it's not more complicated. Remember ischemic tissue, tissue with low oxygen creates mitochondrial damage. The mitochondria can't make as much ATP. We have lower energy. When we have low energy, more of these reactors and oxygen species escape. We have cell damage. The body responds. Methylene blue can donate and accept electrons. It can harvest O2 to the cell and bring more O2 and oxygen to the cell and nutrients because of nitric oxide production. It restores the dysfunctional ATP production. And it by doing so, it doesn't allow the body to trigger inflammation because it thinks the cell's going to die.